Hello there, I'm Natalie. So this video is part of a playlist where I show you how I create and upload a kid's journal onto the Amazon KDP platform. I discuss every stage of the journey and hope to make it easier for you. So let's jump into this video. So when choosing the seven backend keywords, this is what these are what the boxes look like. And there are lots of different theories on the best way to fill them out. Um, should you keyword stuff? Should you just use phrases? Does it matter on the order? There's lots and lots and lots of different theories out there. But if you actually look at what Amazon say, I've, this is copy and pasted from Amazon's website themselves, their best practices. They say combine keywords in the most logical order. Customers search for military science fiction, but probably not for fiction science military. Use up to seven keywords or short phrases. Keep an eye on the character limit in the text field. Before publishing, search using keywords you're considering on Amazon. If you get irrelevant or unsatisfying results, make some changes. And when searching, look at the suggestions that appear in the search field drop down. And of course, don't forget we're using the self-publishing Titans Chrome extension, so we get lots more than Amazon would just provide. Think like a reader. Imagine how you'd search if you were the customer. That's pretty important. So using keywords that don't make any sense will just be a waste of your time. Keywords to avoid. This is again is from the Amazon website. Information covered elsewhere in your book's metadata like the title and the contributors. So that's major. Don't waste your space in your backend keywords repeating your title or your subtitle. They know that already. You don't need to put that in. Words already mentioned in the book categories. So choosing the right categories if there are if you don't need to use those keywords again, basically. Subjective claims, best novel ever, best book ever. Time sensitive statements, new on sale available now. Information common on most items in that category. So you don't need to use the word book. However, it's very hard not to <laughs> when you're trying to think of uh, phrases and so on to not use the word book or journal or note notebook. Uh, spelling errors, that's a pretty obvious one. Uh, variants of spacing, punctuation, capitalization and pluralization. So 80 gigabytes and 80 space gigabytes. Computer and computers. It, it understands all of this. It's, it's very sophisticated. So you don't need to waste your space by trying to put the word spelt slightly different. Like it says uh, 80 gigabytes and 80 space gigabytes. It can work that out for you. Anything misrepresentative, like the name of an author, not associated with your book. So trying to basically steal traffic by using somebody who's doing really well, by using their author name, like Jade Summer, if you're making a colouring book, for example, that would be against their terms and conditions. Quotation marks in the search terms. Single work words work better than phrases and specific words work better than general ones. If you enter complex, suspenseful whodunit, only people who type all of those words it will find your book. For better results, enter this complex, suspenseful who done it without the without the explanation marks. Customers who can search for any of these words and find your book. So that's really interesting. That's basically showing you that Amazon will move your words around whatever order you put them in. As long as there's no quotation marks, it will use all of the words in different order and sequences to find the right customer for you. And also don't use Amazon program names like Kindle Unlimited and KDP Select. So seven backhand keywords. Should you use phrases, one per box or many per box? I do both because I watched this video, seven Kindle keywords by Kindlepreneur, who is an expert in this field. And so he is suggesting to use three or four phrases and three or four of the boxes for multiple words. What this means, let me show you an example. For our particular book, at the bottom, we can see kids journal with drawing space, summer vacation, diary, draw and write. None of those phrases need to be in our keywords because they're in our title and our subtitle. So I've used the first three boxes for phrases, kids travel notebook, kids vacation activities, children's holiday journal. And then the following four boxes, I have used keywords, sort of singular keywords. So six to eight years, activity book, workbook, handwriting practice, cursive writing, memories, keepsake, trips, workbook. Have I got that twice? I have story paper, road trip on the plane. So these are all different words that could be muddled together, could be added in with the title or subtitle. Amazon is clever enough to do all of that. But this is an example. Now you can spend 
hours if not days <laughs> searching up keywords and there are some really brilliant tools out there on the market that can help you greatly with all of this. I don't personally pay for them because they can be quite expensive. I just use Amazon myself and those Chrome extensions to find the data that I need to choose the keywords that I want to use. It's, it's a personal choice, isn't it? How you go about finding your keywords. If you want to pay for the data, there's ways to do that. There are Publisher Rocket is an example. I think Helium 10 is another one. I haven't jumped in and bought either of those products because they are a bit more expensive but you can just use Amazon and, and look for search data that way.